Hey hey and welcome to Rada Explained series. In this video we will dissect Rada's circle and how it's built up. We will make sense of something that at first glance might seem daunting. It can then instead become a great asset for understanding techniques, movements and footwork. First of all, the distances in this video are based on the ideal Spanish Renaissance man. The circle will help you get an idea on how to move. But all distances has to be adapted to yourself when you fence. The ideal height for a man was two vara or six pie the Castilian foot or roughly 167 centimeters. Distances on the circle are measured in Castilian foot, which is slightly less than 28 centimeters. All fencers on the circle are right-handed. I might cover the differences with right-handed versus left-handed in a future video. The starting position of the fencers are when they are in medio proporzio. This is the distance when the point of the opponent's blade is to your wrist or pommel. The distance between the fences are then 8 feet, measured from the heels of their right foot feet. The distance between their left heels are 10 feet. The position the opponent's left heel is at is named LL. The one doing the steps stands on II. The center line between the fencers II to LL is the first line we'll draw of the circle. This is the diameter of the circle. Based on this diameter, we'll draw the exterior circle touching II, LL, and using the diameter drawn. Inside this circle, We'll draw the interior circle using the heel of the right feet as points and the diameter line. Next, we'll add the perpendicular diameter. Now we have the basis we'll use to show several other positions. To derive position, we'll first have to draw some more lines though. Draw a tangent of the interior circle at A. When the tangent intersects the exterior circle, you get C and D. And where it intersects the sixth distance circle, which is how far the sword reaches when your arm is fully extended, you get S and T. This gives the five points S, D, A, C and T along this tangent. Doing the same thing based on opponent creates the points Q, I, B, P, O. Q corresponds to S, I to D, P to C, and finally O to T. Draw a line from D to I and a line from C to P, both parallel to the vertical diameter. Utilizing the points in the upper ta tangent Draw from A to Q, I, P and O. Then repeat the same from above, drawing lines from B to S, D, C and T. This will create all intersections required to describe all the necessary points for Rada. First, we have the curved steps along the circle, both to the right and to the left. The atajo use this movement, among other things. Do note the rotation of the steps on D. The step moves the fencer into a squared position instead of a profile position. I will discuss this further in a later video, just notice it for now. I will also talk more about the steps in a future video. On the left side, you have the step G and then I plus R which are used from the atajo for the movimiento de conclusión, the fight ender, the hilt grab. 
The right foot is moved in a lateral manner as you set it up for a rotation of the body from right side forward to left side forward. The corresponding movement on the right side is done with a fret, using the point and a curved thrust to move in for the hilt grab. It puts you on M. From the Tacho position, the offensive moves when you have the opponent's blade out of the way, moves you to E slash F or K slash L, depending on how close you need to get to the move. Attacks to more shallow targets requires less distance taken, while attacks to deeper targets requires you to, to be more close. Offensive moves when not having control of the opponent's blade is done by moving further offline, so those moves are done to H and M. Do notice a few of the steps are placed on the opponent's distance circles. It is because they need to be at a specific distance away from your opponent. For example, E is 6 feet away, while F is 5 feet away, which is the difference between targeting the face and the shoulder. On the original circle there are more points, numbers and lines. This is a simplified circle with only the points of practical relevance. I might add there is also point 12 and 13 which are used for a few moves. I might reference them later. Overall, remember, this is a tool to help you understand footwork, distance, and movement. I will refer back to the circle in later videos. It's a great tool to explain things with, but do not take the circle for gospel. You need to adapt to your body, your weapon, your opponent's body, your opponent's weapon. Also, the athletic and stylistic differences will at time change some of the distances. Hopefully, this video has helped making the circle look less daunting and given you a rudimentary level of understanding of it. In the next video we will be looking at footwork and some footwork exercises.